So today's verse we have. Uh, today we have told to speak on First Canto Bhagavatam, chapter two and slok twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Isn't it? Yes, Prabhuji. So how we do it? I uh, speak for three times, and then uh, some of the you the devotees they can uh, recite the slok, isn't it? Yes, bro. Sure, sure. So if I recite one slok. Yeah, Prabhuji. If it's possible for you, you can share your screen. Otherwise, I can share it on. We have a projector here. Ah, there we can directly share. That will be more better. I'm okay. So okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. You tell me when you should start. So then. Yeah, we can start. We can okay. start. I have shared it. Vas Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayana Namaskritam Naram Chayva Narottam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayamudhi Rai Nashta Prayesho Bhadresho Nityam Bhagavate Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Ashtoke Bhakti Ribhavati Naishtiki Krishna Yavasudevaya Devaki Nanda Nayacha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha May Krishna. We are reading first canto, chapter second, slok number 28 29. Vasudeva para Veda, Vasudeva para Maka, Vasudeva para Yoga, Vasudeva para Kriyaha, Vasudeva param Ganam, Vasudeva param Tapaha, Vasudeva param Dharmo, Vasudeva para Gatihi, Vasudeva para Veda, Vasudeva para Maka, Vasudeva para Yoga, Vasudeva para Kriyaha, Vasudeva param Ganam, Vasudeva param Tapaha, Vasudeva paru Dharmo, Vasudeva para Gatihi, Vasudeva para Veda, Vasudeva para Makha, Vasudeva para Yoga, Vasudeva para Hakriha, Vasudeva param Gyanam, Vasudeva param Tapaha, Vasudeva para Dharmo, Vasudeva para Gatihi. Yes. Vasudeva Veda, Vasudeva para Makha, Vasudeva para Yoga, Vasudeva para Hakriha. Vasudeva param gyanam, Vasudeva param tapa, Vasudeva para dharmo, Vasudeva para gati. Vasudeva para kriya, Vasudeva param gyanam, Vasudeva para tapa, Vasudeva para dharmo, Vasudeva para gati. Okay, Prajit. Okay. So, Translation purport by his divine grace, Sri Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada, the key chai. Translation: The personality of Godhead. The purpose of performing sacrifice is to please Him. Yoga is for realizing Him. All fruity activities are ultimately rewarded by Him only. He is the supreme knowledge, and all the service severe asteroid desire is rendering loving service unto Him. He is the supreme goal of life. Very wonderful shloka. Prabhupada is giving a very huge purport. So I was thinking we can go paragraph, paragraph by paragraph, and then we can just keep discussing. And there is a huge paragraph. Three pages paragraph. Uh, purport. Purport is confirmed in these two slokas. In the Vedic literature, there is same objectives. Establishing one's relationship and ultimately reviving our loss of loving service unto him. That is the sum and substance of Vedas. In Bhavita, it is same theory is confirmed by the Lord in his own word. The ultimate purpose of Veda is to know him only. All the revealed scriptures are prepared by the Lord through his incarnation in the body of Srila Vyasdev. Just to remind the fallen soul condition, conditioned by the mortal nature of Sri Krishna. Sri, of Sri Krishna, personal embodied. No demigod can avoid the freedom from mortal bondage. That is the verdict of all Vedic literature. Impersonists who have no information of the personal embodied minimize the omnipotency of the Supreme Lord and put him in an equal footing with all other living beings. And for this act, such impersonists get freedom from mortal bondage only with great difficulty. They can surrender unto him only after many, many births in the culture of transcendental knowledge. So this is the, there are the two words which he has spoken by Shilavas Dev. Lord Vasudev is the goal of knowledge. He is the uh, goal of yajna, And whatever yoga we do, the connection also, he is the goal. And whatever uh, benefit or what, whatever uh, things we need in our life, it is actually is coming from him. He only awards the, rewards the ultimate uh, all the fruit activities. So here we are talking about Lord Vasudev. Now uh, there is a one misconception also. People say Vasudev is, is actually not Vasudev is Krishna. That's why if you read uh, uh, earlier sloka, Narayana Namaskrutam Naman Naram Chevandarotam Devim Saraswatim Vasam Tato Jayamudirai. And there is one more sloka, 
कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम सो समाइम पीपल कंसर दिस वासु इज नॉट एक्चुअली द वासुदेव लॉर्ड कृष्णा दस वासुदेव इज कंपेर दिस श्लोका नंद कुमाराय सो दैट श्लोका सीज एक्चुअली वासुदेव हुज वासुदेव हुज सन ऑफ नंद वसुदेव हुज ऑल्सो सन ऑफ नंद महाराज so here it confirms you know the vasudev is not some other person but the supreme person god krishna himself so here shri vasudev in a form uh, the krishna himself has come in the form of vasudev and he is uh, in through him uh, he is telling what is the goal of life now vasudev is a paragati the first is a vasudev paraveda it means what the object of whole uh, veda is to know vasudev that's why shri prabhu is quoting the translation of the words of bhagavad gita that वेदेश सर्वे अहमे य वेदो वेदांत कृत वेद चाह सो इट मीन्स वॉट द अमोंग द वेदांत वॉट इज टू बी नोन इज कृष्णा वासुदेव सो दैट्स वाय हियर वेद व्यास इज वेरी क्लियरिफाइड क्लियरी टेलिंग अस दैट वॉट इज अ गोल ऑफ लाइफ वेन वी रीड स्क्रिप्चर्स वेन आफ्टर रीडिंग सो मच वॉट वॉट शुड बी अचीव वॉट शुड बी नोन दैट इज कृष्णा देर वॉज वन डिवोटी ऑफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु तपन मिश्रा ही वॉज स्टेइंग इन बांग्लादेश when lord chetana came uh, he was a, as a teacher in his earlier life so he went from uh, bengal to now uh, bangladesh where he was teaching all the student on the the gra- grammar so here the tapan mishra comes and he asks oh lord i have read all four vedas i have read all 108 upanishads 18 puranas and other or up puranas mahabharat ramayana but somehow that i have not come to the conclusion what is the goal of life so we can imagine you know uh, it be so difficult to know what is the goal of life that's why by the mercy of vyasdev he when he has written this mahabharat uh, shivad bhagavatam it's very clearly says that you know the goal of veda is to remember to know ultimately is a vasudev and to surrender to him that is has to be understood and we see different different places our different acharyas they also have concluded this madhavacharya uh, just recently on dasera madhvacharya zavir bhav divas was there so where he also his whole life you see he has given his whole life to establish how the vasu the supreme self god is and how jivatma and the lord they are different so if you see always yes these two fingers one finger is one is jivatma living entity and one is vasudev krishna they are two different they are not one but impersonally they think krishna is also like one of the living entities but that is not true we are totally different from the lord this one is shruti mantra it says um nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidatu kama this shloka says that nityo nityanam this is the difference between the lord and the living entity the lord is also eternal the living entity also is living eternal huh um uh, and the nityo nityan chet and he is lord is also conscious the living entity is also conscious spirit soul is also conscious so what is the difference the difference is eko bahunam yo vijdatu kaman that one in supreme living entity can fulfill the desire of all other living entities if we consider ourselves if we analyze in our life if we see first in our life whatever we want first desire comes in our life and we try to work on it but ultimately we know that even after endeavor is so much the result doesn't depend upon our endeavor unless the parmatma in our heart when he he sanctions it so he fulfills our desire so there is a great difference between living entity and the lord so nobody can say there is no no there is no difference that's a, that's why prabhu is writing here the impersonal is when they want to get freedom from this material but they can't get freedom because their conception are totally different they, they are the conception are wrong they think the living entity and the lord are the same but as a vaishnava as a different our acharya is This is like Krishna Karaya Goswami says, "Ekala Ishvara Krishna Ara Sabha Bhritya." Only one God, Krishna is God, and all other are servants of God. All our demigods, all living entities, whoever are there, they are servants of God. So one has to understand this. Then only one can get liberation. That's why the last line of this paragraph says that they can surrender unto Him only after many many births in culture of transcendental knowledge. This is actually Bahunam Janma Nam Ante Ganava Nam Prabhadate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sa Durlabha is very rare. 
Um, it's in fact, Shilam uh, Advachar in Six Kind of Bhagavatam, he quotes from Tantra Bhagavat. He says, There are millions and millions of demigods are there. There are crores of demigods are there. Among only few only know that Krishna is supremacy of God. It's very rare. Even it is said that when Lord Krishna was present in this world uh, 5,000 years ago, that time also only very few people could know his God. Even he was present among the so many people who were killed, 64 crore people were killed in the 18 days. But not everybody could understand Krishna as God. Like Pandavas, Bhishma, Vidura, and some those who are pure devotees, uh, devotees only could understand that he is God. So that's why it's very rare. Uh, Marsha Shila Prabhupada, we have got very easily to understand you know, that Krishna is God, you know, Vasu is God. But if somebody wants to really know by reading scripture by his own, without the help of Shila Prabhupada's purpose, it's very difficult. It's almost impossible. Just like I gave an example of Tapan Mishra. He read so many, like four Vedas he read, eight Upanishads he read. Still, he couldn't understand. So that's why. The Veda, Vasudeva, Parabeda means the, the goal of Veda is what? To understand Vasudeva. If that is understood, then somebody has understood Vedas. If one has not understood the Vasudeva, if he has not understood the Vedas. The goal of Vedas too is to understand uh, Vasudeva. That's a from this paragraph. So we'll go paragraph by paragraph so that we can focus on that way. Is it okay? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. One may argue that the Vedic literature are based on sacrificial ceremonies. That is the truth about Vasudev. Another name of Vasudev is Yajna, sacrifice. And in the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly stated that all sacrifice and all the activities are to be con conducted for satisfaction of Yajna or the Vishnu, the person of God. This is the case also with the Yoga. So now here, there are two things about Yajna and the Yoga. We have Vasudev, Yoga. So I'll read that also. That is also with the Yoga system. Yoga means to get into the touch with Supreme Lord. The process, however, includes the severe, several bodily features as asan, jhan, pranayam, and meditation. All of them are meant for concentrating upon the localized aspect of Vasudev, represented as a Paramatma. Paramatma realization is but the partial realization of Vasudev. And if one is successful in the attempt, one realizes the Vasudev in full. But by all ill luck, most yogis are st standard by the power of mysticism achieved through the bodily projects process. ill fated yogis are given a chance in next birth by being placed into the family of good learned brahmanas or in the family of rich mer merchants in order to execute the unfinished task of Vasudev realization. If such fortunate brahmanas and sons of rich men properly realize their chance, they can easily realize the Vasudev by a good association with saintly person. Unfortunately, such, prefer such preferred person are captivated again by the material wealth and honor. And thus, they are practically forget the aim of life. So there are two things about this. Vasudeva Paramakha and Vasudeva Parayoga. So, there is one shloka in uh, the scriptures called Yajna by Vishnu. The whole purpose of Yajna is to satisfy Vishnu. In 7th canto of Bhagavatam, it is said, the Yajna is the mouth of Lord Vishnu. The service says, Swaha, Indra, Indra, Swa, Idam, Nama, they, they chant many, many shlokas. So that Yajna, the Yajna, Bedi, they say, yeah, sacrifice altar, actually is, is just for the satisfaction of Vishnu only. Yajna by Vishnu. It means for that whole process is for that. Even in Yajna, during that time, they chant many, many demigods also name. But they understand this is not for them. Idam, Nama, it is not mine. It is only for Vishnu. Even that's why Yajna, uh, but many times, many people, they do Yajna, big, big Yajna, sometimes 1,000 pound Yajna or uh, 100 Yajna, uh, but still, they don't understand what is the purpose of Yajna. Earlier ages, actually, the realization of like uh, Dwapar Yuk, uh, Satya Yuk, uh, Treta Yuk, and Dwapar Yuk. So Treta Yuk, the Lord's realization was coming through Yajna. Miss Satyuga, where devotee are the uh, for God, yes, the people will go to the forest and they would meditate and then they would realize God. And then Treta Yug, they would do actually yajnas. If you read Srimad Bhagavatam, where uh, different different places where devotees they would do yajna, and from yajna uh, altar, the Lord Himself would come out with forehand Vishnu and they would pray to Him and they would ask benediction. So the purpose is that only to realize Vishnu. But nowadays Yajna are done for some different different uh, purposes. But they have forgotten. So there was sloka. Uh, even the Karma Khan is this, in this sloka. 
करोमि यज्ञम सकलम सदैव नारायणामि समर्पयामि व्हाट एवर यज्ञ एनीबॉडी डज एनीथिंग एट द एंड व्हाट इट हैज टू बी समर्पण व्हाट हैज टू बी नारायण बिकॉज व्हाई द दरिव श्लोक इन भगवत गीता 5 कैंट ऑफ 5 चैप्टर इट इज शांति सूत्र सर्व लोक महेश्वर यज्ञ व्हाट इज स्टार्टिंग ऑफ दैट भोक्ता यज्ञ तपसा सर्व लोक महेश्वर सूरदम सर्व भूता ज्ञातवा शांति मृच्यते मीस वॉट भोक्ता यज्ञ तपसा भोक्ता मीस वन उज एंजोर ऑफ द सेक्रिफाइस सेक्रिफाइस नाउ एनीबडी इज डूंग एनी यज्ञ यज्ञ मीस नो एडिंग गिविंग फायर सॉरी वुड घी ग्रेन्स सो मेनी डिफरेंट डिफरेंट आइटम्स बट वट इज भोक्ता मीस वॉट एंजोयर Um, the meaning of bhokta is called enjoy. So one has. So, so who is enjoy? So Krishna is said. Uh, Krishna says bhokta ram yagya tapasa. I am the actually enjoy all the sacrifices. Krishna very clearly saying that there very. So we can understand from there even the different scriptures like you know uh, the Prithu Maharaj himself was incarnation of Krishna as a shakti vishuddha, but he was doing yagya for pleasing Lord Vishnu himself. So it's very clear even Lord Brahma they do yagya, even all demigods when they do yagya. Even if somebody goes in Satya Yoga, Satya Loka, where every day when the Brahma Ji does Yajna, he actually does for the Mahavishnu there. There is a Lord Mahavishnu is lying there, and he every day worships him there with Yajna. He offers him bhoga, arti, everything. Also does Yajna. So it's very clear. Even uh, Brahma Samhita also, uh, Brahma Ji also very clearly saying the how the Yajna, the process of our work to satisfy the Vishnu. And he is a goal of life. Even says. So as here is very clearly said, the Yajna is. Uh, has to be uh, all actually has are to be conducted for the satisfaction of yajna or vishnu the personality of god in other one more shloka in third chapter of bhagavad gita which says that um, uh, i'm sorry i'm not getting this it says that any activity has to be done has to be done for only for vishnu even we eat that is a kind of yajna it is not yajna is just doing a putting ahuti in a fire is called yajna but actually it is said the when uh, the living it is eats if he eats take, takes prasad in his mouth actually that is also called sacrifice fire sacrifice so uh, it's a uh, consider the mouth is considered as a fire, the mouth of uh, fire sacrifice and he is putting the prasad that's in seventh canto bhagavatam says lord is very much pleased with sometime when the, uh, the please with the more somebody is putting ghee in yagya then if he uh, the devotees are fed that is also kind of yagya so sacrifice is not just uh, putting out in uh, 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 fire sacrifice but different different way but the purpose is what to satisfy krishna or vasudev so the next uh, item is we are talking about vasudeva para yoga now normally if you consider especially in a foreign country normally for what is the purpose of yoga is what to have a good health isn't it have a good health you know long life uh, disease free life but if you consider if you see from scripture point of view yoga is not at all for that purpose the word yoga means to connect connect to god if that is missing then that yoga has no meaning because yoga has yoga's one of the name is ashtanga yoga ashta anga yoga ashtam there eight limbs are there in yoga system there is dhyan dharana yam niyam uh, asan uh, then um, Mm. what is it the meditation called samadhi is that there eight folds are there pratyahar so these are eight uh, limbs of yoga are there what is the purpose but the end result is samadhi samadhi is full focus on lord vishnu means i when i do yoga suppose i am doing ashtang yoga for that i am supposed to follow as i should give up negative things i should accept positive things i should follow the asanas normal people think asana is yoga is one of the limb of yoga like you know uh, different different kinds of pranayam pratyahar these are just one of the different different limbs of yoga and then dhyan dharana and samadhi samadhi means total absorption in some activity especially normal people feel but especially here is given योगी नाम श्रद्धावान्तमेंटेस्ट योगी 
who is able to focus on person of god in his heart always able to remember him that's why if you see yogis when they go you know actually yoga is nowadays not possible is impossible man because one has to remember celibate one has to go to forest and if i don't know in canada it must be very cold during a uh, winter season there must be you know uh, what do you say the raining raining also in the snow also so there is a question of doing yoga there <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry but the yogi actually they have to be celibate they can't stay in home they have to be in a jungle and they have to sit either on a no no higher or no lower place and very silently have to meditate on lord vishnu's form like his four handed form shankha chakra gada padma he smile his on the smiling face the eyes are lotus petal the nice very curly hair sir the helmet is there nice garland uh, flower garlands are there nice ornaments are there he has to meditate on each and every part of lord's vishnu's body he has to meditate on lord's cloth he has to meditate on lord's finger na- uh, uh, nails he has to meditate on lord's lotus uh, toe uh, uh, toe nails and he has to even meditate on lord's uh, the will how many spokes are there and one one spoke he has to meditate that way that is a yoga scene where he has to med- try to meditate and what happens that time because he is not expert suppose so he has to bring his mind again and again and as dhyan then dharana which he is able to do for some time but samadhi means he can do for long time no but he just can just sit and just he can just meditate on lord vishnu how lord is so beautiful but there is a problem in this as probably is writing here you see what probably writes here but in fact that yogis are given cha- sorry now here if one is successful at time one year is standard by the power of mysticism achieved through the bodily process now what happens here in this script in this uh, situation uh, when somebody does uh, yoga he gets yogic power there are called ashta siddhis uh, ashta siddhis is what you know that somebody can become lighter than he can be he can uplift himself in air he can float in air or he can walk on water he can become smaller he can travel anywhere by air or if somebody wants something suppose i am sitting in india now i think in canada there must be good apples so i am sitting here and i just uh, extend my hand and i can get apples from canada that much power one can get he can make um, big planets he can even uh, vashita means even he can control somebody else's body also somebody else's um, consciousness he can control somebody some people that very very different different way it happens so normally what happens when somebody does yoga for long time he he start getting this kind of uh, yogic perfections like there are silla probas uh, talks about uh, one of the lecture there was one time there was one yogi he had some of the no he was in he was in banaras so he would just come out naked outside he would roam around naked he was yogi so police would take him and put him in the jail after some he would again come back he out so people said wonder how is possible he is inside the lock how can he come out he wanted to say there are some yogis in himalayas they do meditation every day they come they take bath in a ganga in a himalaya and they come out in prayer they take a deep in prayer again for yamuna ganga saraswati and again they go by the waterway and back to himalaya that much power they have so yogis are so what happens by that like sometimes they are uh, don't eat for longer long time they just uh, um, remain with this water or with air so and by that they get lot of powers and what happens by that um, they get think okay i am i have become god now sometime one more thing happens when they start meditating on vishnu himself and Uh, by uh, seeing that Vishnu, they feel I am that same Vishnu. So the the process of realizing Vishnu, uh, Vishnu got choked up, and they can't go ahead. So when they live their life, when they live up, they give up their body. So they have not realized because as early we have discussed, Vishnu is different than living entity. We are totally different. We are not same on the level of Vishnu because He is providing us. You see now. among us also we who we, what we are uh, are we providing the people we are not providing air we are not providing water 
the the fire the food grains or the atmosphere the land everything is not provided by us it is provided to us by lord vishnu that's why his eko bahunam yo vijda to kama he is fulfilling all other people's desire there's a difference but here yogis what happens you know they start thinking okay i am that same you vishnu and the yogi process uh the process uh, the, the their progress get hampered there and they can't advance in the spiritual life again then the next time then they as probably writing here that they have to come they have to take birth either in a pure brahmana family or some rich family a rich uh, merchant family where they can uh, easily uh, start again the process of realizing vishnu but most of the as probably writing here uh, because of material wealth and honor they forget again the aim of life and there are so many people in the world they are also born in rich family you know sometime in a very pure family but it is not all the time you know all the rich people are becoming devotees of krishna or you know they are taking to god cause sometime when these people also very very atheistic people so it is not because because ma, the material nature is so powerful the illusory nature of, of the lord is so powerful sometime they get build up not sometime many time so shila prabhupad is that's why he says in this lifetime we have got this chance to be in god conscious so let us finish this vision in this lifetime only let us not take a chance for next time we don't know what will happen next time means uh, we don't know the situation will be how the people will be uh, where will be born how the situation around us as be it's been very must be very difficult also so shila prabhupad says very clearly to us so let us finish this in uh, this lifetime and finish our process of realizing god so anybody has any questions can i go ahead the third paragraph yes prabhu ji yeah this is also for the culture of knowledge according to bhagavad gita there are 18 items in culture in the knowledge but such devoid of vanity non violent forbearing simple devoted to the great spiritual master and self control by culture of knowledge one becomes unattached to the hit hurt and the uh, home and becomes conscious of miseries due to the death which culminates in devotion service to the supreme personal god vasudev that was vasudev the ultimate aim in culturing all different branches of knowledge the culture of knowledge leading one to the transcendental plans of meeting vasu is real knowledge physical knowledge in this virtue in its virtuous branches contained in bhagavad gita as agyan or the or the various or the opposite of real knowledge the ultimate aim of physical knowledge is to satisfy the senses which means to prolongation of the terms of material existence and thereby continuous of three four miseries so by prolonging the miserable miserable life of material existence is nescience but the same physical knowledge leading to the way of spiritual understanding helps one to the end the miserable life of physical existence and to begin begin the life of spiritual existence on a plan of vasudev so here talking about the vasudev paragyana isn't it param gyanam now there are different uh, there is a real knowledge and there is a uh, transcendental there is a material knowledge so here the knowledge we are talking about is the vasudev param gyanam is is a transcendental knowledge as soon as one gets knowledge he has to develop the qualities by that knowledge so here is shila prabhu is talking about he is giving uh, the 12th chapter uh, and shlok number 12 12 to 20 there are there are the 20 items of knowledge so this is here um, the first is uh, about the pridelessness adamittam amanittam adamittvam shanti marjam amcha it says that the shloka says that amanittvam uh, sorry uh, first quality comes is a pridelessness as soon as one becomes i guess gets knowledge of god so he has to become pridelessness and this is a very important quality in our life now how it's very simple to understand is not something very difficult or if you are more intelligent than me actually pridelessness is what when you understand how god is so uh, so uh, what do you say unlimited god is so unlimited and i am so tiny i had my capacity to understand god is so tiny my intelligence is so tiny my body is so tiny my body has so much limitations and god is so unlimited by understanding this only we become prideless that's why it is there is one uh, um saying uh, that when the tree gets fruits normally when a season comes when tree gets fruits the because of the weight of fruits it has to bow down the branches they go down why because of the 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 fruits same way one the person when he gets knowledge actually he has to become humble if 
the knowledge brings pride and that is actually not a knowledge that has to be understood the as soon as one gets knowledge actually has to be humble because we understand god is so unlimited i am so tiny we understand very clearly you know this mahavishnu himself by when he excels there are from this spore of, of the pores of his body that unlimited that uh, the universe is coming out and then one universe there is a garbhadakshi vishnu shivadakshi vishnu and from navel there is a brahma in that navel there are 14 planet systems are there and there one for uh, 14 planet system in that there is a bhuloka is there and the bhugal bhuloka there are seven seven uh, oceans are there so uh, seven varshas are there one of the varsha is what nine varshas among that is a bharat varsha in that bharat there is one prut bharat khand is there bharat khand is bharat varsha so in which so tiny piece and among that now this is india suppose if you are considering this whole world there are seven oceans are here also there are now there is canada there is america there is south africa sorry there is africa there is europe there is india there is china australia huge place and among that also there are where there is some small where we are just tiny one of the place we are staying one small you no know, place and among that where we are one person if you consider this whole uh, situation we are so tiny but understanding we can say i am so i you know i can't compete with god so i have to surrender to him actually humility is what pridelessness is what to surrender to god i can't compete i am not god i am just the tiny servant of the god that's what one when realizes this you know i am the this knowledge he has to be prideless and that of course he says it's a gradually it's a gradual process it is not just immediately it happens slowly slowly when we hear this knowledge then when we start understanding it we try to try to practice it the slowly slowly we come to know i am so insignificant what is my situation as a kathopanishad says that you know the size of a soul is you know is uh, the 1/10000 part of the tip of the hair no what how now a modern scientist even cannot even do that you know the top of the hair make a 100 into again 100 So it become one ten thousand of the part. So how is possible? That is the size of soul. And God is called Vibhu. We are called Anu. Anu is very tiny, and the called Krishna is called Vibhu. So that's why we make them prideless and uh, non-violent. And we understand this this whole world belongs to Krishna. So everybody has right to stay here. That's why the devotee of the Lord he is automatically vegetarian. He doesn't have to be preaching. You should not eat meat because he knows. You know, the all other living beings are there. They are also part and parcel of God. They are also the sons and daughters of Krishna. Then the all animals are also uh, Krishna's part. So I can harm them unnecessarily. There is no need. Is there is need is different part, but there is no need for at least, especially for now my says my tongue. He becomes non-violent. Uh, then then he has talked about in uh, here forbearing. He is tolerant. He understand because now because of my mistake I have come here in the metal world. So when the, all these miseries are because of my past deeds, so he tolerates them as because of its reaction to my own karma. But because I am trying to become a devotee of Krishna, so by God's grace, the Lord is minimizing the suffering in my life. He becomes forbearing. There is sloka by Brahma Ji says that te no kampa susta miksha manu. ऑर्नामेंट ऑफ अ डिटी This is the first quality comes in devotee's life. Simplicity means no duplicity. What he is inside, outside, same thing, no difference. And that's why, for us also, if we can think our ourselves also, it becomes very easy to deal with simple people. If I ask them, some of you know that what do you feel? To whom do you like to be deal with? Simple people or complicated people? People speak something to you, think about different. They speak something different to others and do act something differently. So you like to uh, discuss with them, or like to deal with them, or people who are very simple. 
what you talk to them they also follow same thing whether they agree or not is a different part but at least they are very simple no duplicity so normally we like to deal with people who are very simple same way if we have developed that quality that people love us sometimes people think you know why people are not loving us because we have to understand when we become simple people like to deal with very easily and he is very simple man so you can go we can talk to him very easily but somebody is complete and no no he is very complete he speaks something different he is thinking and he is thinking some different let me keep myself different as away from him because they are complicated but simple means of course there are so many examples in scriptures now there can be classes on this of course we don't have much time on this so we'll go ahead about this uh, and here one more point is here is talking about the sign of a knowledge is devoted to devoted to great spiritual master as we go ahead in our spiritual life we starting in our spiritual we think are okay you know i can uh, chant i can read i can follow i can advance you know i can become pure i'll go back toward myself but as we go ahead in spiritual we understand no i need a uh, mercy of my spiritual master i need a mercy of a devotee i need a mercy of a previous acharya i need their help i need their strength i need their mercy so that i can go ahead and by that slowly slowly he gets devoted devoted to spiritual master he understand i may do for some time because of my uh, temporary enthusiasm but for long time somebody who has to go uh, for spiritual life for that he needs mercy he can understand and that is also very good relation he understand okay, i need mercy in my spiritual master and i i need association with devotee i am do de- i am dependent on them as so a krishna has given us some such a great personality he has written a chatra charita amrut he has written 12000 verses uh when he was age of 90 see he had arthritis he was not able to he didn't know when he, how much he is going to stay but he says i am writing the chitra chitra with great literature because of the mercy of my devotees the mercy of, uh, by the mercy of our devotees uh, krishna's vaishnavas devotees so that's what he feels that same way as we advance in our spiritual actually this, this is a good sign it's actually a sign of a good sign where a uh, devotee feels i need devotees i am dependent on them somebody thinks oh, i don't need devotee i can practice spiritual life my own i can chant alone i why i why i need devotees i can cook at home i can you know i can offer to krishna i do i have prabhat books okay i can just go on then actually he needs some time more time he has to realize he has to think he has to really advance the he to that point where he can understand actually i need devotees in fact he says krishna karan goswami says the association of a devotee is actually like a for me is a walking stick i am not able to walk so i need the help of a stick when well, sometimes the old devotees old people they are not able to walk so they need some stick with the help of stick they walk same as say for me this stick is the vaishnava association so he becomes devoted to spiritual master and he has self compromise he automatically he says okay now this is goal of my life to, uh, to achieve krishna so i have to be self control for that of course then we can go ahead by culture of knowledge one becomes unattached to the home and becomes conscious of miseries to to that for that old age and disease so now this is also it says janma mrityu janavadi dukha dosha nu darshan this is shloka is probably uh, quoting here he says here the devotee when he becomes conscious about the miseries of life when we, we ask people are you happy i am very happy actually devotee says i want to become happy he understand now there is a birth old age disease and that and this and there are three tap you know uh the adhyatmik adi bhoti adi the miseries due to because of our own mind and senses that uh, the miseries given by the the higher uh, demigods and uh, and uh, miseries given by other living uh, living entities so these miseries are always constantly giving us uh, miseries uh this uh, and we are always miserable and that's why by seeing how situation are there is sometimes there is snow sometimes there is a rain uh, sometimes there is war sometimes you know there are the the problem in my house there are problem in my office sometimes there is problem in my mind sometimes my body is not uh, cooperating and now earlier i was young now i become old now my my two thumb are coming out sometimes i'm not able to hear properly so it's okay i understand this is the, this is the life i am supposed to see this is the the way it's supposed to be but i have to make a best use of bad bargain water body which i have now let me use in krishna service i have to tolerate it and there is no other option anyway other than this 
Prabhupada Prabhupada writes one of the, the Prabhupada gives one lecture and they say, uh, he says Hindi, he says, Prabhupada Chupcha Buddha Bana Dega. <laughs> this is one of the, he says, it is, you may, we may or we may not want to become old, but we are going to become old. We may or we, are, we may not want to become disease. We are going to get disease. The example is Corona. <coughs> Excuse me. Because in the, during Corona time, nobody wanted to be got, uh, get Corona, but many have got Corona. So by seeing devotee doesn't get uh, what do you say disheartened or you know depressed or in a go. No, he understands this is our this is the bodily transformation is there, but I am spirit soul. And I'm supposed to get detached. Krishna is sending this, all this thing. Why? So I can get detached from this. So that actually I can attach to Krishna. One day I'm supposed to give up this body. That's why when Silapur was in 1977, when he was almost like you know about to leave his body, he's he, for months now, he was not eating anything. He was just taking a little bit of water, sometimes some pomegranate juice. So that time, uh, he was Bhakti Tarun Maharaj asked one question to Prabhupada. Or some other, I don't remember exactly the name of devotee. He said, um, Srila Prabhupada, you have some desire to be fulfilled. Because normally we ask people, you know, when they are about to leave the body, what is your desire? Before going to your, before giving up your body, what is your desire? So you know what Prabhupada said? Kuch I don't have any other desire now. My all desires are fulfilled. The point is what? that We have to come to this stage where, you know, I understand this world is not for me. This world is actually, uh, you know, words of Sri Bhakti Santhar Dagur says, this world is like a toilet. Do your business and go get out of this place. Because this is not supposed, we are not supposed to stay in this material world. We are spirit soul by nature. We are spiritual by nature. We are supposed to stay with Krishna. Where there is a sloka in Shri Brahma Samhita says that Shriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kalpataravo Dhuma Bhumi Shinta Mani Gada Mai Toya Amrutam Tatha Ganam Natyam Gamanapi Vaushi Priyasaki Chidanandam Jyoti Paramapita Daswadam Apicha Shayatra Shirabdi Savati Surabhi Yasya Sumahan Nimesha Dakyova Vrititi Nahi Yatra Pisamaya Vaje Shweta Dvipam Tamahamiya Golo Kamithyam Vidan Taste Santakshita Virila Chara Kati Paye. This Luka says that the description of spiritual world. Sriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kalpataravu. That place we are, we are, we are supposed from, we are, we are from the spiritual world. The place is what? Every tree is a wish fulfilling tree. It means what? That tree is when you just could come under the tree and you desire, I want some samosas. And you get some samosas. You may say something, this is something when you know, so you are making a story. This is from Bhagavad Gita. Brahma Samhita, Brahman is saying this very clearly. So at least we should have that full faith on that. He says, no, okay, you want some mangoes, you get mango. So it is not, now here in this world, mango tree will give only mangoes, or banana tree will give banana, or you know, uh, some apple tree will give apple. But Kalpadra means what? Kalpa means you can just, what? Just desire and you get it. Kalpadra, Dhuma Bhumish Chintamani, that. The, the bhumi, the land is what is actually the wish fulfilling land. It's like Chintamani. And the Chintamani, Dhruva uh, Chintamani, Kalparuksha, Lakshavati Surabhi Abhipala Yantam. The lakhs and lakhs of cows are there. Where Krishna is herding them, cows, all cow herd boys are there. And Katha Ganyam Natyam Gamanapi. Every walk is actually dancing there. Every speak is not speaking, but says singing. Normally, we want to dance all the time. And all we want to sing. When we, we are happy, that time we are dancing. When we are actually happy, we are singing. Isn't it? In our good mood, we always sing. So, but in the spiritual world, all the time is good mood there. And there is no time there. There is no old age. There is no birth. No old. So that's why devotee is okay. This is my last time. Let me finish my business here. And now my goal is to go to spiritual world. I am not supposed to be this material world. Now, what has happened now? We have long, 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 long time we have been here. So we thought, we are thinking, this is our only our life. But this is not our life. That's just like and Dabur says, this toilet, use the, use, what, where, for what purpose you go to the toilet? For doing some purpose and this what dark, work something and just go. Same way, this world is that way. Finish our business and do bhakti, uh, surrender to Krishna and go back to spiritual world. That there is no birth as Prabhupada writing in death, but in disease. This is actually called a culture of knowledge. And one has a goal. I'm supposed to go there. 
and uh, the ultimate aim of physical knowledge is to study by the sense okay no not, uh, so. but the same physical knowledge leading the way of spiritual understanding helps one to the end to the miserable life of physical existence now you may say prabhuji but all the time doing bhakti how will do we have our work we have you know um, like i'm maintaining the home cleaning the home actually everything as krishna said bhagavan whatever you do you connect to krishna then it becomes spiritual activity it is not just you know a devotee don't eat anything they don't sleep they don't recreate they do everything but they have connection to krishna if that is a things are done then that also becomes spiritual knowledge whatever knowledge like somebody knows painting like in our our um, we have so our iskon movement there are so many devotees they did lot of painting like you are seeing is mother radha is painting here in our your temple here i am able to see here panchayat temple so there were some devotees from iskon shila pro disciples actually they painted so they had the knowledge material knowledge but what they did they used in krishna service that becomes spiritual knowledge somebody is a photographer he can do that photographing devotees or krishna that becomes, that becomes spiritual knowledge so same thing it may it, it the knowledge is whether a spiritual or material depends on where you are using it of course bhagavad gita always spiritual but the material knowledge also what physical knowledge what we have that if you are using krishna service becomes a spiritual like somebody is doctor he can use that same thing to also for treating devotees that's the best use of uh, the his uh, education actual one okay i'm supposed to go by 845 isn't it yes prabhu ji so now i'll just speak some now almost now half hour but is still there so i have been told also to speak about kartik month isn't it we can we can extend little bit project 10 15 may should be fine if you okay, are so okay so i'll just i'll just quickly go ahead uh, with this purport uh, and then uh, we go ahead then we'll speak of something about kartik month calendar the same applies to the all kind of austerities tapasya means voluntary accept of bodily pain to achieve something higher end of life ravana and hrnakesh fundament severe types of bodily torture to achieve the end of sense gratification sometimes modern politician also underwent severe types of austerity to achieve some political end that is not actually tapasya one should accept voluntary bodily inclinations for the sake of following vasudev because that is the way of real austerities otherwise all from austerities are classified into mode of passion or ignorance passion and ignorance cannot end the miseries of life only mode of goodness can mitigate mitigate the threefold miseries of life vasudev dev ki are so called father and mother of lord krishna underwent penance to get vasudev vasudev as the son of, of their son lord krishna is father of all living entities that for his original living being of all other living beings his original eternal enjoyer among all the other enjoyers that for no one can be his becoming father as they grow may think lord sri krishna agrees to become the son of vasudev and devaki upon being pleased with their severe austerities therefore if any austerities have been done they must be done to achieve the end knowledge of vasudev amazing this paragraph so here shila prabhu is talking giving light on the austerities what is austerity austerity means to please krishna anything which is not done for the pleasure of krishna is not austerity that is called mode of passion ignorance and that will not end, it will not uh, end our miseries because in passion and ignorance sometime in i don't know about outside india but in india there is many time people they do lot of you know uh, uposhan amaran uposhan for 3 days 4 days you know they because you are not fulfilling our desires so we are doing uposhan means you know we are going hunger strike will die uh, will do hunger strike till end die we die so sometime we uh, so people do it but that is not real austerity because it is for their own personal self gratification unless uh, somebody does austerity to achieve mercy of krishna achieve the mercy of a devotee or a to like this here example shri prabhu was giving krishna is not a is not a son of vasudev because uh, the vasudev and devaki did lot of tapas in their previous life to please the lord that's a lord has agreed to become their son so austerities are for what like we do ekadashi we do janmashtami we do some there are different festivals are coming we have fasting what is the purpose of fasting that by doing this some inclinations i want to remember krishna this is called upavas upavas means staying near to god upavas upa means near ne- staying near so means what i am doing upas for staying near to god on ekadashi we do chant more rounds we don't just fast uh, sometimes people say, okay i want to fast for ekadashi why he was an i have got my i have put up the weight but that is not a purpose of ekadashi okay that may be the second reason the first reason is what 
I want to do fasting so that I will lessen my body body needs and I can chant more rounds. I can hear more. I can do more kirtan. I can do more uh, service or I can be more associated with devotees. That's the purpose. And the, <coughs> the other things are secondary. If one is doing for that as a for pleasure of the hostel, then it's perfect. That is actually the purpose. Okay, we'll go ahead. Other is Raman or is an example given Hindu Gashimu. No, who can do the Pasa like Hindu Gashimu? He was standing on one toe, one toe for 10,000 years of demigods. You see, all his body was eaten by ant, and there was an ant hill on his body. Can, can somebody do this kind of tapasya? But this tapasya has no meaning, though. that is no, no connection with Krishna. He wanted to do for his, to his own um, uh, sense gratification. So, tapasya is what to flow pleasure of Krishna. As I said, Vasudeva Paratapa. Vasudeva Param Tapa. If that's why we see the Srila Prabhupada and his disciples, you know, they have done so much tapasya we see why to please Krishna. Now, Srila Prabhupada in age, uh, such an advanced age, age of 70, when that time he was he didn't have any money. He came by cargo ship. For it took one month to come from India to America. And after that, he had two heart attacks. Firstly, he was forbearing so that you know he can preach to the message of this uh, to the whole world. And know, and after that, also he whole night he was awake for writing she's uh parashila purport purports, uh, purport, guiding so many devotees, so many problems must be having. Now in India, the people are culture, that's a different part. But in America or other places where they didn't have any knowledge about God consciousness, they didn't know what to do, how to wear sari or how to wear dhoti, how to eat, uh, how to offer. Like, you know, uh, I remember one of the past time when Prabhupada was saying, when Prabhupada was in New York one time, the, all the hippies, because that time the hippies were staying in the slope with Prabhupada in the 22nd Avenue. So, so then the morning time when they want to take bath, so Prabhupada also is standing in line. There are other five, six hippies are standing in line and Prabhupada is behind. They did not do that. He is our guru here. We have to be given first chance to go inside to use bathroom. So, uh, but they did the Prabhupada did so much just to encourage, uh, to inspire uh, devotees all over the world. And by that, we are seeing, we are because of their tapasya, we are actually having such established scorn movement in one sense. Otherwise, the starting of the movement was so difficult. I remember in uh, Canada, the Toronto comes in uh, Canada only, right? Yeah, correct. So I remember uh, one of the um, devotees was talking about is one of the pastimes of Srila Prabhupada. You know, Prabhupada wanted to print a uh, Krishna book. And at that time, Prabhupada wanted some uh, nice paintings of Krishna in the Krishna Lila, in the Krishna book. But that time, the devotee didn't have money. So they had uh, the praise in Toronto that time. Yeah, Toronto, somewhere, I don't remember exactly the name, mostly in Europe, but you can tell So, uh, sorry, Canada only. So it is said um, in their house, when there was snow was falling outside, there was no heater because they didn't have money. But Prabhupada said, no, in one month we have to no, the, paint all the crystal era. So, and you know, you can't uh, paint the uh, photographs you know, of Krishna Lila with hand glows because there was no heater inside and there was so much cold. So they had to paint without glows, but uh, in, a, in a, such a cold season, uh, the painting of Krishna Lila's. So old Krishna, whatever they had. So this is actually the person to please spiritual master to please Krishna. And they did it. Actually, they didn't any facility. It is said earlier time, they, uh, I remember Mukundar Puru came to uh, Puna, once he was a part of our uh, Radha Dhamma, the bus party. He said when they were there in bus party, uh, the, the water collection would come, they would go to India uh, for building the Vrindavan temple, Mayapur temple. Therefore, they were, they were funding that. So it said for them, the life was very austere. Morning, they would just eat some khichdi without any vegetables. And they didn't have any place to stay. So where they would take bath, they would take bath in a car wash. Put dollar and all the brahmacharis they would just stand in the line in the, the car wash area and they would take bath there. You can imagine what kind of austerity they have done. You know, there are so many devotees. Of course, uh, we, for that time, we'll go in that only. We will understand it's not uh, this kind of austerity uh, for the satisfaction of a devotee or for a devotee for Krishna's spiritual master. Actually, this is a pleasing to Krishna. And that is actually Vasudha Param Tapa. Other not just for the own, uh, I did this tapasya uh, for showing off. And that is not a real tapas actually. So I will we'll just go ahead and wait. Vasu is the oriental person of God is Sri Krishna. And expanding before the oriental person forms are made possible by his various energy. 
Generators are also multifarious. See, internal energy are superior external is in foreign quality. There are explained in Bhagavad Gita as para apara prakriti. So his expansion of various forms, which takes place via the internal energies, are superior forms. There is expansion which takes place via external energies are inferior forms. The living energies are also ex in expansion. The living energies are expanded by internal potency, are externally liberated eternally liberated persons, whereas those who are expanded in the terms of mental energy are etern eternally conditioned souls. Therefore, all the culture of knowledge, austerity, sacrifice and activities should be aimed at the changing the quality of influence and acting upon us. For the present, we are all being controlled by external energy of the Lord. Just to change the quality of influence, we must endeavor to culti cultivate the spiritual energy. In Bhagavad it is said that those who are, are Mahatmas, those who are, whose minds are, have been so burdened broadened as the engage in the service of the Lord. Okay, here Shilapur was talking about there are uh, Krishna's unlimited energies. So the, there are three are main. One is uh, internal energy, one is external energy, and other is uh, the marginal energy. Those devotees, uh, those living entities are in the internal energy that are called uh, Nitya Siddhya, like Yashoda, Ananda Maharaj. They never get influenced by Maya. Shivati Radharani, not Radharani, but at least other Stoki Krishna or uh, Subala, or the cows, or those who are staying in the Gola Purandam, they never get influenced by the external energy of Maya, of Krishna. But uh, they are called as a, uh, eternally liberated devotees, souls, Nitya Siddha devotees. But there are some uh, living entities who are uh, marginal, those who are influenced by external energy, like us, we are in material world. We are not influenced by them, so we are called internal, eternal, eternally uh, conditioned soul. Now, what it means by eternally conditioned soul means what? For so long, we are in this material world. Now, there is no history for how long we are in material world. That's why we are called as etern eternally liberated soul, uh, eternally conditioned soul. It is not we are always from here because we never always write some back to home, back to God. Back to home is earlier we were in home, we were there, but we because of our mischievous, we have come here. But we have come so long here in the material world that's why it is long time now. So we don't know how much, how long time we have been here, material world. That's just called eternally uh, conditioned soul. But as Prabhupada is writing here, um, therefore all the culture of knowledge, austerity, sacrifice, activity should be aimed to change our quality of influence that acting upon us. Now we may get uh, get influenced by the external energy of the Lord, in material energy. So now we have to change our, from our our from material energy to get to get influenced by internal potency that is called Mahatma Asa Maam Bhartha Devi Prakuti Mahasrita Bhajate Ananoma. So it says that those who are Mahatma's great soul, they get influenced by where? By internal potency of the Lord, Shimati Radharani. That's why they are called Mahatmas. And one does it actually, then actually they are uh, considered pure devotees of the Lord. And one is uh, constantly engaged in Krishna service. That should be the aim of life. And that is the verdict of all the Vedic literature. No one should bother himself with fruitive activities or bad speculation about transcendental knowledge. So it's proposed writing here. We should not speculate by our own. The absolute should be like that or that. No, it's very simple. We're given a scripture, we are very easily ready-made available. What is the absolute truth? One time, there were some uh, three uh, very Vedantists. They came to meet Shila Prabhupada in Vrindam. And they asked them, what is the... Uh, what is the goal of life uh, and uh, what is the uh, ultimate truth in Vedas. They were, called, they were told themselves there are uh, three Vedas. And Swamiji actually is very difficult to understand uh, the absolute truth. You know, it's beyond words, you know, beyond experience and then start blah, 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 no for that. And uh, then Srila uh, Prabhupada called one of the two uh, Kurukuli devotees and showed this one Vasgulla. Tell me what is the absolute truth? They said, Krishna is the Supreme Person God is absolute truth. Just see, these are our two boys, these Google boys, they know what is absolute truth. And you all of you have read so much Vedas that you don't know much. And they gave them the Rasgulas and they went. So that is actually what there is. So it says no one should bother himself about fruit activities and that's the question about transcendental knowledge. Everyone should at once engage himself in transcendental learning service of the Lord. When you read these scriptures, as it says, the goal of life is to achieve Vasudeva, Parabeda, Vasudeva, Paramaka, Vasudeva, Para Yoga, Vasudeva, Paradeva. So as Prabhupada is now telling us very clearly, as soon as everyone should at once engage himself in transcendental service of the Lord, nor should one worship different demigods who work 
different hand of the lord for creation and probably that is we should not there is no need of worshiping demigods also but demigods are also like different limbs of the lord they are servants of the god so as krishna is saying you now they are you directly worship me man manabho vad bhakto madhya jivan mas krusu you worship me directly krishna is very clear krishna you should worship him so that's how we follow instructions of krishna so there is no need of extra apparently we are doing something uh, separately doing worship of demigods if you want to worship demigod there are 33 crores demigods are there then if suppose even one time you want to do agarbatti for one demigod i don't know how long it will take for you know the worshiping all demigods better be so take the worship with the source of demigods that is krishna if you worship krishna then all other demigods are satisfied watering the root of the tree all the branches leaves flower fruit everyone gets nourishment that's a this proverb time to say here not sure when okay mental destruction of material there are innumerable powerful demigods who who look over the external management of the material world there are all different assistant hands of the lord vasudev even lord shiva brahma are in, included in the list of demigods but vishnu the vasudev is always transcendently situated even though he is exhibited the quality of goodness of the material world he is still transcendent to all material modes the following example will clear the matter more explicitly in the prison house there are prisoners and managers of the prison house but even though the king is sometimes come to prison he is not bound by the laws of prison house the king therefore always transcend to the laws of prison house as lord always transcend to the laws of material nature so are there in the prison house and those who are marrying the prisoners the superintendent prisoner the the superintendent of the prison they also they also stay there they take care of all the management you know the security cleanliness cooking you know the electricity everything they take care but they are also part of the prison they they are also bound by the laws of prison but the king he doesn't stay in uh, the prison but sometime he comes into prison to see how the prisoners are there how the facilities of prisons are there how they the so he is not bound by any uh, laws of uh, prisons that's the point so that's so there's a different in demigods and the um, the lord vishnu or krishna himself so the demigods are also the spirit soul they are also the under they are also hands of krishna but they are on the behalf of krishna doing service and they are also living entities like us but they are on a higher level okay so this is what uh, is about them so i'll just read the whole uh, translation again in revealed scriptures the ultimate object of knowledge is shri krishna the person god in the purpose of performing scripture sacrifice to please him yoga is for realizing him for fruit activities are ultimately rewarded by him only his supreme knowledge and all the spirit uh, astrologies are performed to know him religion dharma is rendering living service to him he is the supreme goal of life hare krishna this is about shrimad bhagavatam so now uh, i'll just speak briefly about this take me few minutes about uh, kartik math now they have to tomorrow tomorrow is sharad purnima very auspicious day and they have to uh, um, that uh, there is kartik ma- month is coming so kartik month is actually very very auspicious uh, is among the fourth month of Ka- chatur mas and this month is very dear to shrimati radharani and it's called damodar and this month there are so many pastimes that happen one pastime is lord krishna was bound by mother ishu on this month and that is also on diwali day in the same month krishna lifted govardhan hill and this is the month where uh, it is said in mathura mahatmya also in padma puran there is anybody uh, does any activity in other places like chanting and uh, hearing the about lord he may get in this month 100 time benefit but if the same person goes to vrindavan or mathura he gets like chanting one round is equal to 1000 round in vrindavan that much is a purification we can imagine in kartik month it says one time the there was one uh, and also is very very uh, auspicious also and uh, uh, it is said uh, it's called urja vrat urja means offering uh, lamp to the lord especially lord damodar in this one only mother yashoda bound uh, lord krishna to the grinding mountain so it is said uh, one time um, there was one mouse he was you know lottering around the temple uh, altar side and he wanted to eat something So he went nearby. He saw one uh, the lamb, and uh, that lamb had some ghee. So he wanted to eat that ghee. So he, as soon as he put his mouth inside the that lamb, somehow the the lamb was about to get vanquished. But because he was touched, that uh, wick went ahead a little bit, 
and that week again got lit and up again because of that it is said because of that he lit up the temple of the lord that mouse was taken to the spiritual world you can just imagine that mouse so it is not something ordinary to to do bhakti in this month so especially devotees they chant more rounds in vrindavan devotees sometimes chant every day 64 rounds they do more uh, parikramas they hear krishna book they read every day bhagavatam they every day they offer diya to the lord you know and serving the devotees serving deities uh, doing some service in temple which has unlimited benefit it says anybody has any poor fund of um, what do you say sukruti is life he said if there is any service in uh, this kartik month he becomes a devotee of krishna so if somebody if you want to make somebody devotee of krishna bring him to temple uh, during this kartik month and tell him to offer dia to the lord let him do some service to temple do let him do some serving to vaishnavas some service to our deities but the the benefit is amazing so it's very very auspicious one amrish maharaj uh did tapasya in kamyavan in this month for whole year so this is the month where he uh the dura samani was forgiven on this month only in kamyavan it's so very very auspicious many many thousands of devotees are going all over the world to now to have darshan with other shams and dar krishna maldam gaur and tashila prabhat samadhi is there and they are going different places govardhan leela this one like krishna also lifted the govardhan so they go to govardhan parikrama there are so many devotees even there is no place to one walk even now but at the same time we may may or may not have chance to go to vrindavan but by shilapurva's mercy we have got same facility in a caligari isn't it to have a temple here to have a, wherever the lord is the deities are there the devotees are there his pure devotees are there that's vrindavan and same benefit we can achieve uh, by being there uh, offering the uh, other things this is what is our uh, is a great mercy of shilapurva by his mercy we are able to we our life is changed other we our life was totally aimless we didn't know what to do what is right what is wrong as but slip by slip of mercy we came to vasudev paraveda vasudev paramaka so we are supposed to worship only vasudev and our we are sure we are supposed to go back to god surely we got if we just take this as this hari krishna chila prabhupad ki jay grantra shivan bhagavatam ki jay i'm sorry my english is not so good my mother tongue is not english But I, I just tried whatever I can for my side. Any question? Any comment? Somebody want to give? Uh, any correction? Because if I have spoken something wrong, something of his bliss, feel uh, free to say it. Thank you, Prabhu. You know, it was perfect. It was very clear, and uh, we were able to understand as well. So very nice, very great. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Uh, if any devotees have any questions, they can come here and ask. Uh, any anything you would like to, and we have a uh, lot of online participants as well. If anybody would like to ask, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, there is one question online also. What is a kriya? Vasu or para kriya? So here, if you see here, the translation says that the fruity activities. The Lord is uh, the all fruity activities are to be unlimited, unlimited, uh, ultimately rewarded by Him only. It means what? Uh, the Water activity is like uh, the karma kind. Of what we is, is called kriya. He said talked about here. So if I do this yajna, I get uh, son. I get you know beautiful wife. I get beautiful husband. I'll get job. So in according to the scriptures, uh, we want some benefit. So by doing some yajna, some sacrifice, we do some karma kind, some pujas we do, and we get some result. But he also very clearly proved that all fruity activities are ultimately rewarded by him only. So. Whatever some, because this karma kind means so you go to this demigod, you go to that demigod. No? For you know, Indra you go, or Surya you go for better health, or for uh, beautiful you go to Lord Shiva, beautiful husband you go to uh, Shiva, uh, Uma or Parvati, or you know for good health you go to Ashwini Kumar. Scripture says that, but it says ultimately the all the uh, rewards are given by whom through them by Krishna only. So why not to Vasudev Para? kriya means you worship him directly there is no need to go to different different places like we have this uh, mall na, supermarket everything available is one place only so whatever you need we don't have to go to different place but go to krishna himself so he will give all the even somebody has been mortal is also he can go to krishna he will fill all your so he anyway all the rewards are coming from him only even suppose ashwini kumar giving uh, you good health but from where they are getting shakti 
It's from Krishna only. That is the point. Is it okay? Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other uh, question or something? Comments? Um, we have one question online as well, too. We can take that if possible. Uh, what are these internal, external, and marginal energies? How does it relate to souls like us and align with Krishna? Do we gain or get exposed to internal energy? Okay. The energy means Shakti. Shakti means, you know, uh, the energy and energetic. So there are, the Krishna has unlimited uh, energies, but they are, uh, 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 like, what do you say? And three ways they are divided. External energy means what? Where the Lord's external energies are like a illusory energy, which is governing this whole material world. If those are conditioned souls are actually are controlled by this external energy. Those are forgetful of Krishna, they are controlled by this external energy. It's called Maya Devi. There is an internal energy which is that works in a spiritual world. The whole spiritual world works under internal energy. All this pure devotees. So whatever in spiritual world happens, they are all guided by internal energy. To please Krishna. But here in external energy, all the uh, material world, all those are conditioned souls. Actually, they want to uh, enjoy themselves independently, sense deviation. So they are guided in that way. But ultimately, they get frustrated, they get miserable. But, uh, and the marginal energy is what? Uh, as we, as a living entity, we are like, you know, the sometimes, you know, the ocean we have, there is a place just outside hole, uh, there is no water, it's like outside of land is there. And there is a ocean this side there. But in between, there is a place. Uh, so ocean shore, but the water also keep coming. There is land also. So living entity can choose whether he want to be internal energy or external energy. Whether he want to be get controlled by the illusion of the Lord, illusory of the Lord, so that he is getting always misery, miserable life, or he want to surrender to Lord. And that's why says the sloka says the Devi is Gunamai. Sorry, Mahatmanastu Maam Partham Devi Prakriti Ashi. This transcendental Prakriti, which is actually govern the whole spiritual world. Where we want to, so it's it's a the marginal actually chooses where he want to be, whether to be kicked by Maya or want to be under the shelter of internal Shri Madhuradhan and like that. Of there are many things has to be can be told. I'm short. I'm telling this. Other devotee can answer after the classes because classes. Anything else? Thank you. For any any other questions anyone would like to ask? Uh, uh nothing from here, Prabhuji. I think you explained it very nicely. Hare Krishna. I'm very grateful. If anything uh, spoken very wrongly, please forgive me for that. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.